This is my 2024 Toyota Prius Prime, and it has an awesome feature that makes it perfect for home backup. Toyota barely mentions it in their marketing materials, but in this car is an integrated 1500 watt AC inverter that basically makes this a rolling power station with a massive battery. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to use the Prius Prime as a super easy way to back up critical appliances during a power outage. Then I'm gonna talk about how to level this up by combining it with a large power station like the EcoFlow Ultra to take it to the next level and power your entire house. Then we're gonna finish it off by taking this off grid by powering it with solar panels so you don't have to pay for charging. Before we jump in, let me just explain the difference between a regular Prius and a Prius Prime. The regular Prius is a gas hybrid, which means that you put gas into the gas tank and there's just a small battery that helps with fuel economy. The Prius Prime has all of the features of a regular Prius, so you can put gas in it, but it also has a much larger battery and you can recharge it from the wall at your house in about 11 hours or a level two charger in about four hours. The thing that surprised me most about the gas powered hybrid Prius is the battery is absolutely tiny. It's only 0.9 kilowatt hours, which makes it smaller than the battery in the EcoFlow Delta III. The Prius Prime is a completely different beast. It has a way larger 13.6 kilowatt hour battery that is 15 times larger than the standard Prius. In fact, it's so big, it's roughly equivalent to a EcoFlow Delta Ultra with two batteries. Now of that capacity, you're only able to really tap into 10.6 kilowatt hours, and that gives you around 40 miles of pure EV driving range, but it can also be used to power your house. Now, I think the most exciting feature you get with the Prius Prime that you don't get with the regular Prius is this has a built-in 1500 watt AC inverter that lets you run any sort of appliance that you want. So that essentially turns this into a rolling power station. So to put that in perspective, this EcoFlow Delta III power station has an 1800 watt pure sine wave inverter and the Prius has a 1500 watt. The only difference is the Delta III has a one kilowatt hour battery and the Prime has a usable 10 kilowatt hour battery. So using the AC inverter in the Prius is super simple. You just turn the car on and press the AC button to the lower left of the steering wheel. The Prime has two outlets in the car to tap into the inverter. The first one is in the second row behind the center console and the second one is in the back hatch area on the left-hand side. Both are hidden behind a plastic protective cover. To test the max output of the AC inverter, I figured the easiest way to do that would be to try to recharge my EcoFlow Delta III from the AC plugs in the Prius Prime because this recharges at 1500 watts, so that will put it right at its max. In my test, the Prime had no problem at all recharging the Delta III at 1500 watts, and it topped it off in about an hour. Having two outlets in the car is super convenient if you're camping, because you can plug in pretty much anything that will run off of a standard wall outlet in your house. But I think the best use case for this is for home backup, because all you have to do is grab yourself an extension cord, plug it into the Prius, then all we have to do is run this extension cord into the house to power some critical appliances. All right, so now that we have power in the house, all we have to do is plug our extension cord into our fridge and we're in business. So now the fridge is running off of the Prius. Works great. Now this isn't just limited to the Prius. There are some plug-in hybrids that also have inverters and there's definitely a whole bunch of different EVs that have AC outputs on them. So this is a great alternative to either buying a small power station or a small gas generator and it doesn't really cost any additional money than what you already paid for your car. When using the Prime as a backup battery, you're gonna to wanna to shut off as many things in the car as possible to minimize wasting energy. That means shutting off your headlights, interior lights, infotainment system and screen, and heating and cooling. There's an auto off feature that you're gonna to wanna to disable because otherwise this will turn the inverter and the car off after one hour. When the message pops up on the display, select no and hit enter. Since the Prius is on, it's really important that I can lock it, but I've realized that using the key fob does not work. So you actually have to use the manual key on this and that does lock the doors. Since there's no power meter on the Prius, I'd suggest getting one of these simple plug-in meters that you can use, just plug it into the extension cord and then you can actually see how much power is flowing through here. You can then add a power strip and that will let you plug in multiple devices. So you could plug in your internet, a bunch of phone chargers, maybe a couple light bulbs and your fridge, and that'll get you through a couple days of a power outage. 
there are some downsides that you need to be aware of. Because you're running an extension cord, that means you really only have power in one room of your house, and you can only plug in things that run on 120 volts. A lot of bigger appliances in your home, like air handlers and well pumps, use 240 volt two-phase power, and that will not work with the Prius. And that brings me to the second part of this video, where I'm gonna show you how you can use the Prius as a way to extend a larger whole home power system so that you can get longer run times and still power larger appliances and hardwired circuits. By far my favorite large power station for whole home backup is the EcoFlow Pro Ultra because it packs a whopping 7,200 watt pure sine wave inverter capable of 240 volt two phase output in a single box. That allows you to run really large appliances like induction stoves, air conditioners, and well pumps. There's USB-C and USB-A outlets, as well as high power DC output on the side. Controls couldn't be any simpler. There's just a power button, an AC button, and a DC button. My system consists of the inverter and two of the six kilowatt hour LFP battery modules. That gives me 12 kilowatt hours of total battery storage, but I can expand this with up to three more modules for 30 kilowatt hours of total battery storage. If you want to scale this up even more, you can combine up to three of these ultra units together for over 21,000 watts of AC output and 90,000 kilowatt hours of battery storage. Setup is so easy with this low profile connector that's used to daisy chain the batteries together and connect them to the inverter unit. You can recharge the ultra from the wall at 1800 watts or plug it into a level two EV charger or a large generator and recharge it at 3600 watts. This also has dual solar charge controllers that can handle up to 5,600 watts of solar power. That'll let you power this off-grid indefinitely. We'll cover that more later in the video. To connect the Ultra to my electrical system, I have two different methods, and I actually can use them at the same time. First, I have a sub-panel with critical loads, and that is connected to an interlock so I can power the entire panel with the Ultra. Second, I have a transfer switch, which allows me to choose specific circuits and run them off the Ultra day to day. And I use that to save money every month on my electrical bill. Both of these connect with the same 30 amp plug that's on the front of the unit. I just have this Y cable that allows me to connect both at the same time. With the Ultra connected to my transfer panel and sub panel with interlock, I can back up the vast majority of circuits in my house with just flipping some switches. This whole setup is deep in my basement and it really isn't practical to run an extension cord from the Prius in the driveway all the way through the house to get to the Ultra. So I wanted to find a much better way to connect these together. I ended up installing a 120 volt power inlet on the side of the house, really close to the driveway, so I can run a short extension cable from the Prius into the house. Inside the house, I ran a 20 amp line from the power inlet all the way across the basement to a dedicated outlet right near the Ultra. That way it's basically a hardwired extension cord that's much safer. The power inlet cost around $300 to have installed by a professional electrician, but it's a very DIY friendly project if you wanna tackle it yourself. I'm curious how much the Prius Prime can recharge the Ultra, so let's put that to the test. I'm starting with the Prius fully charged, so it has 40 miles of range on the battery right now, and the Ultra is currently at 15% state of charge, so there's plenty of room to recharge it. At this point, all I need to do is start the car, turn on the AC inverter, and plug everything together. All right, at this point, I've already plugged the Prius into the power inlet by the driveway, and that power is going through my basement and coming out at this outlet over here. The first thing I wanna do is plug this power meter in so I can track exactly how much energy is going from the Prius into the Ultra. Next, I'm just gonna use the standard charging cable that comes with the Ultra, plug that into the power meter, and get the Ultra charging. When I first plugged everything together, it worked, but I was noticing the power going into the Ultra was racing all the way up to 1700 watts. Then after a few seconds, it would flip off and then flip back on and then rise up to 1700 watts and then shut off again. And that's when I realized I had made a mistake. I had left the wall charging setting for the Ultra at 1800 watts, which is 300 watts more than the Prius can put out continuously. So the inverter was actually overloading and then resetting itself and then overloading and then resetting itself. So all I had to do is open up the EcoFlow app, adjust the charging speed down to 1500 watts and everything worked perfectly after that. This turned out to be a happy accident because I learned something about the Prius inverter 
And that is if you overload it, it will restart itself after a few seconds. And that is a really great feature that I've never seen before in a power station or a generator. So if you're trying to run a critical load during a power outage, and for some reason it trips an overload, the Prius will turn it right back on after a few seconds. That is a great feature, and it's something that I wish more power stations had. All right, everything's running great now, so I'm just going to let it keep charging the Ultra, and we'll check on it in a couple hours. Okay, so we are three and a half hours into the test, and right now the Prius is saying that it has 15 miles left in its range of 40 total, which is about 38%. And the Ultra has increased from 15% state of charge to 60. So let's check back in about an hour and a half. And at that point, the Prius should be fully drained and we can see how much power we've pulled from the battery. Okay, so it's been about five hours since I started the test. And now the Prius is saying that it has no EV miles left. So that means the battery is drained. And at this point, the Ultra has gone from 15% state of charge to 86, so that is a 71% increase. This will really increase my run times and is roughly equivalent to adding one and a half of the six kilowatt hour Delta Ultra batteries. So it is a lot of energy. Now I expected that when I came back to the car and the battery was drained, the AC power would be off, but it's actually still running. And that's because what I've learned is that the Prius actually will turn on the gas engine and use it as a generator to both directly power the loads and recharge the battery at the same time because this thing has roughly a 4000 watt charger. So what we can do is leave the car running for the next hour or so and see if it will continue to charge up the Ultra and if we can get it to 100%. All right, so an hour has passed and now the Ultra is at 100% and the car is still chugging along and it's only really taken a couple miles out of my gas range. So I think this is fairly efficient and it's really cool that it can seamlessly move from battery mode to generator mode when the battery runs out. According to my power meter, the Prime was able to push out 7,800 watts or 7.8 kilowatt hours into the Ultra. Now that's about 74% of the 10.4 kilowatt hour rating for the Prius. So the efficiency is definitely a little bit lower than your typical power station. That would be closer to 80 or 90% efficient. Now I fully expected that the efficiency would be lower because well, we're running a car and no matter how many things we shut off, there is still gonna be some residual overhead that you can't get rid of. And that's why I think the best use of the Prius's battery is this kind of application where we charge at maximum power into a power station so then the car can turn back off. I'm gonna call this test a massive success because not only was the Prius Prime able to recharge the Ultra at full speed with no problems at all, I also discovered two features that I didn't even know existed that are really unique. The first being the fact that the AC inverter will restart itself automatically if you overload it, will save you a trip out here in the middle of the night to press a button, and that's something you won't find on any power station or generator. And the second big feature is that this will seamlessly transition from battery mode to gas generator mode to give you massive run times if you're willing to dip into the gas engine. In the third and final part of this video, I want to show you how I recharge the Prius Prime using my Delta Ultra and some inexpensive used solar panels so it's completely off-grid and not contributing to my monthly electrical bills. In addition to the 9.2 kilowatt grid-tied solar system I have in my house, I have some smaller arrays that I use to charge power stations and that's what we're going to use in this project. On my roof, I have six 330 watt LG solar panels. Now those are wired in series, so it's around a 240 volt array that gives me around 2000 watts of power. I have three of the same panels here on the ground. I've wired those in series for a 120 volt array that gives me around 1000 watts of power. I only paid $60 a piece for these 330 watt LG panels off of Facebook Marketplace. So if you wanna do this cheaply, definitely look on Marketplace or reach out to local solar installer shops and see if they have old panels that you could buy on the cheap. One of the killer features of the Ultra is it has dual MPPT solar charge controllers. Low voltage is better for portable panels or just a handful of panels that you might be wiring together. And the high voltage can handle very large rooftop arrays. So together, this system is just under 3000 watts. 
And on a sunny day here in the spring, I am getting around 2,500 watts, which is pretty good. And I definitely anticipate that that will go up in the summertime when the sun gets a little higher in the sky. If you're trying to charge your car off-grid every single day, what really matters is having enough battery storage so that you can get through cloudy days and still keep up. Now I found that with my current system, with 12 kilowatt hours of battery storage in the Ultra, that if I had a cloudy day, I wouldn't be able to fully recharge the Prius. And in other days where it was very sunny and I wasn't driving the Prius much, the Ultra might get filled up by noon and I'm wasting all that solar energy. EcoFlow was kind enough to send me two additional Ultra batteries, which doubles my system size from 12 to 24 kilowatt hours. Let's go ahead in the basement and set it up. The best part about the Ultra is it is super easy to upgrade with no technical know-how. All I need to do is unplug the inverter unit, take the two new batteries and stack them on top of the other two, then place the inverter unit on top of that. Now that everything's stacked up, all I need to do is connect everything with these low profile cables and we're in business. Each connector also has a locking mechanism to keep everything secure. So with just two minutes of effort, I was able to upgrade my Ultra system from 12 to 24 kilowatt hours of battery storage, which is more than enough to keep my house backed up for multiple days during a power outage and gives me plenty of buffer to keep the Prius charged regardless of how bad the weather is. I've been using these solar panels and my Delta Ultra for about a month now to recharge my Prius day after day, and it has been working absolutely flawlessly. Now, obviously I'm not recommending that you go out and spend all this money on a large system just to recharge your hybrid vehicle off grid. But if you already have invested in a large power station and solar panels for emergency power during a grid down scenario, why not use it every day to recharge your car or run appliances off grid and save money on your electrical bill? In my case, I can generate anywhere from 100 to 125 kilowatt hours a month of power and that comes right off of my electrical bill. All right, everyone, well, I hope you had as much fun as I did playing around with the Prius Prime. And I really think this combined with the Ultra is an incredible system for backing up your home and as a great way to recharge the Prius off-grade. Let me know down in the comments what you think of these ideas and how we can make it even better. Thanks for watching, everyone. Until next time.